So here's a simple trick for getting high precision measurements without any fancy tools or any fancy techniques. The simple tool that you need is a tape measure. Yes, a tape measure, even though it's not highly precise, you can make it precise and I'll show you how. And the technique is about amplifying your errors so that you can really get dialed into the, the measurement that you want. So what's the problem statement? What am I trying to do here? I'm building a chevron pattern dining table. And a chevron pattern is where you basically take 45 degree cut at the top of these two boards, combine them together at a, at a butt joint, and it creates a little chevron pattern. And then you have multiple of these in different rows as you traverse the entire table. The current step I'm at is I'm about to cut a 45 degree angle on a bunch of these boards. I need to know how many, do I, how many boards do I need to cut? I don't want to be faced with a problem down the road, this glue up, where I'm short a couple inches and I need to go figure out, okay, what was the exact angle? Was it 45 degrees, 45 and a half? Like, I don't want to have to deal with that problem later on. So I want to know now, at this very moment, how many rows I'm going to need. In order to determine the number of rows, what I need to do, actually what I need is, I need to know how long this length is right here of this 45 degree cut. Because this length right here, that represents the total vertical space each row is going to take up. It's a little bit confusing when it's slanted like this, but when, if you just simplify it to, well, within a, a given slice of the tabletop, how much vertical space is it taking up? That'll help you figure out how many rows you actually need of these boards. Maybe an obvious go-to here is like, well, why don't you just measure that, the diagonal on the, uh, on the square here? Well, one reason is because it's not accurate. Second reason is because it's hard with the tape measure. Okay, so what about another option? Well, you could just you know, measure the width here, and this says four and a sixteenth, four and an eighth, somewhere in between there. And then I could plug that into a formula to figure out the diagonal. The thing is you could do that, and that'll get you pretty close. The thing is, let's say I use four and a sixteenth of an inch for the overall width of this one board, assuming this board was representative of all the other boards I have. Let's say I said it was four and a sixteenth of an inch, the diagonal for that, did the math for this off camera. The math of the, for that comes out to about 5.75 inches, five and three quarters of an inch uh, for that diagonal length. If instead I use four and an eighth, the math for that comes out to 5.83 inches. And that's quite a bit of difference. It may not seem like a lot of difference, but when you have 15 rows or 20 rows of boards, that amount of error adds up and compounds and compounds and compounds and could put me in a situation where I'm off by an entire row. And again, I want to avoid that. So here's what I do is I take my boards and I'm going to amplify the errors and I'm going to measure the overall width of four different boards. And I'm going to do four boards specifically because it makes the math very easy. So here we go. I've got four boards on my table saw. I'm going to pinch them together. Then I'm going to measure the overall width of these boards pinched together. And the overall width of these four boards pinched together is 16 and seven sixteenths of an inch. So that tells me if I divide 16 and seven sixteenths of an inch by four, 16 divided by four is four, seven sixteenths divided by four is seven sixty-fourths. And that's again why I chose four as the number here is the, the math gets pretty easy dealing in, in multiples of four there. So now I know the average width of the board is four and seven sixty-fourths of an inch. If I plug that into the formula, the distance is 5.81 inches, which is different than 5.83 and different than 5.75. And that's the number I'm going to use to determine, based on how long I want this table to be, I'm going to divide it by 5.81 and change. I'm going to keep all the remaining decimal, and that'll tell me whether I need to cut an extra row just in case, or if I'm solidly, I've got enough rows, I don't need to cut any more plywood, and I'm good to go. So that's the trick. Yes? A tape measure is not super accurate. I mean, a sixteenth of an inch is accurate in some settings, but in other settings, it's not. In other settings, you, you need a set of calipers, but you can still use a tape measure and just a simple idea of like compounding your errors and then dividing out the average in order to see what's the average width of the board that you have in front of you. That's the technique. That's the trick. I hope that's helpful. I'm Charlie. I'm with Measure Twice Woodworking. Hey, real quick follow-up note, because I know I'm going to get a comment about this, and I just want to make this very clear. I gave this example as an example for why it's beneficial, why it could be beneficial to amplify your errors. If you don't want to go through all that, it's like it's fine. Just cut an extra couple of rows, and that's also perfectly fine for something like a chevron pattern. Like, yeah, I do that all the time. I don't know exactly how many rows I'm going to need or exactly how many pieces I'm going to need. I'll cut a few extra just to hedge my bet and move on with my life. 
But in this example, again, there's it's just in certain situations, it's really powerful to be able to get high degree precision with the tools you have on hand. And sometimes you just have a tape measure. And this was one way to get high degree precision with just a tape measure. So take it for what's worth. Just an example. Thanks again for watching.